let's talk about tiny houses, shall we? This is a thing across the country. People building tiny houses under 1,000 square feet in desirable locations, not spending all their available cash on a big house. They don't need it. They're downsizing in a beautiful way. There's even a TV show called Tiny House Nation on the FYI network. And Kristen Scovera is here with us now. And you went out today, Kristen, to a tiny little house a right tiny here reporter in Littleton. went to a tiny house. <laughs> That's what happened today. Um, they have two adults, two very large dogs, all under one tiny roof. Wow. But it's really the why they had to build this house that makes the finished product so special. Next to this mountain vista, anything would look small. But in the case of this 500 square foot home, it's more than an optical illusion. Most people, most kind of average Americans and most of our friends, nobody lives in this small. So people kind of say, how are you going to do it? The tiny dwelling sits on the ashes of Kristen Moeller and David Cottrell's original dream home that was tragically destroyed in the Lower North Fork Fire, March of 2012. Probably one of the worst days I've ever had. We spoke to the couple during that green grief-stricken time as they sifted through what remained of their worldly possessions and wondered if they'd ever rebuild. Every time we would come in, we would drive in, and I would just get this knot in my stomach. Not sure what to do, Kristen and David lived in an Airstream trailer on the land and even spent time in friends' basements. But then a small idea began to grow. We saw an ad for a company called Cabin Fever. Now rising from the ashes, their tiny home dots the landscape. The homeowners, along with their two large dogs, are now members of a small movement of tiny home dwellers who embrace a minimalist lifestyle. I don't know if I ever want more than can fit in the back of my car, and there's kind of this, in case we have to go, you know, in case we have to run again. The two-story house is very cozy and energy efficient, with in-floor radiant heat and a wood-burning stove. Solar panels provide electricity. We have come back, we have built, we've created space that we love. The floor plan includes a kitchen, loft, bedroom, bathroom, and two offices. Plenty of room, according to the inhabitants. So for the tiny house purist, we are going to be, you know, they're going to say, this is not a tiny home. This is a tiny mansion, and we're calling it now a tiny mansion. And from their tiny mansion, they look out at the view and say they know they're here to stay. We're going to come out of this better than we went into it in every way. And we have done that. What a great story, Kristen. Now, you were in that house. Did you feel claustrophobic or kind of closed in I mean, at all? I mean, I'm maybe the wrong person to ask, but I felt pretty good there. Uh, they're very organized. You'd have right. to be, so maybe take some trips to Ikea and get everything in their place. Um, they not only live there, though. They, they work there, they, too? They work there. Side by side, they have offices. Uh, and she's a writer. You saw her writing there at the desk. She even wrote right. a, a story about what they went through, their trial by fire, so to speak. So, right. uh, you know, they're very cool couple, very um, inspirational you know to what see it, what they did. I think it would feel good to be able to, like she said, you fit everything you own in the back of your car. If you ever need to go, if you ever need to get out again, and, uh, they've got it all right there. Yeah, they said they spot. don't even want a storage you know, locker right. or anything there. They say they, they like their, their new lifestyle. That is interesting. As the gets. view is killer. I yeah. got to say that. So <laughs> it, you feel very small up there. That's for sure. All right, Kristen. Thanks.